I'm in Cheddar this morning, the place I used to know really well when I lived in the North Somerset area. So I'm really looking forward to revisiting the village and the surrounding area today. Situated on the southern edge of the Mendip Hills in the Sedgemoor district of Somerset is the large village of Cheddar, which gave its name to the famous Cheddar cheese. This is the Market's Cross, which dates from the 15th century and is a scheduled ancient monument and Grade II listed building. Several repairs have been made to the cross before now after suffering damage from traffic accidents. The latest repairs were completed in November 2012 at a cost of £60,000. Cheddar has been a centre for strawberry growing. The crop was formerly transported on the Cheddar Valley Rail Line, which closed in the late 1960s, but is now a cycle path. The village is now a major tourist destination, with several cultural and community facilities, including the Cheddar Show Caves. I walked up through the village towards the bottom end of Cheddar Gorge, where riverside walks, tea rooms, restaurants, gift shops and the famous Cheddar Caves can all be visited. Cheddar cheese is known throughout the world, and the traditional method of cheese making can still be seen at the Cheddar Gorge Cheese Company, the only cheesemakers left in Cheddar. Hand making authentic Cheddar takes around seven hours, and visitors can see the various stages throughout the day from a viewing area. Whilst watching the cheesemakers at work, a short film of the whole process can also be viewed. Once the cheese making has been seen, visitors are invited to try the cheeses in the taster bar. Members of the Rotary Club of Mendip work in the Rotary Sensory Garden to create a peaceful place for locals and visitors. The garden is planted with fragrant plants to give sensory awareness to partially sighted and blind individuals. Cheddar Yo River is used by Bristol Water who maintain a series of dams and ponds which supply the nearby Cheddar Reservoir via a 54-inch diameter pipe that takes water just upstream of the garden. continued up the main street, the steep cliffs of the gorge were becoming more apparent. One of the many places in Cheddar where you can enjoy breakfast, homemade cream teas and afternoon teas, as well as bistro evenings and Sunday lunch, are the Lion Rock Tea Rooms. 
The tea rooms are named after the large upright outcrop, which can be seen opposite. It is not difficult to see why the rock is so named. The gorge is the site of the Cheddar Show Caves, where Britain's oldest complete human skeleton, Cheddar Man, estimated to be over 9,000 years old, was found in 1903. Older remains have also been found, dating from around 12 to 13,000 years ago. The caves, produced by the activity of an underground river, contain stalactites and stalagmites. The two main caves open to the public, Goff's Cave and Cox's Cave, are on the south side of the gorge, owned by the Longleat Estate, and are both named after their respective discoverers. Goff's Cave, which was discovered in 1903, leads around 400 metres into the rock face, and contains a variety of large rock chambers and formations. Cox's Cave, discovered in 1837, is the smaller of the two but contains many intricate formations. In 2016, Cox's Cave was turned into Dream Hunters, a multimedia walkthrough experience with theatrical lighting and video projection. The walk I had chosen to do today began as I turned off Cliff Road to follow a track below Lion Rock. In a short while, I climbed some steps to a gate on the right as I followed a way marker post for the gorge walk. was a steep climb, but in time the gradient eased and the path broke into a clearing. Here I walked on through a gate at the top and turned right along a broad path. I was now getting some great views over Cheddar Reservoir the Somerset Levels and Bristol Channel in the distance. My route was to keep following the broad path, but before doing so, I decided to take a quick detour to something sensational. Well, I'm now looking over what must be Cheddar's most famous landmark. Cheddar Gorge. From this spot, I had fantastic views right down into the limestone gorge. It is a tourist destination attracting about half a million visitors each year. In a 2005 poll of Radio Times readers, following its appearance on the 2005 TV programme Seven Natural Wonders, Cheddar Gorge was named as the second greatest natural wonder in Britain. The maximum depth of the gorge is 449 feet with a near vertical cliff face to the south and steep grassy slopes to the north. The B3135 runs along the bottom of the gorge. The gorge was formed by meltwater floods during the cold periglacial periods, which have occurred over the last million years or so. During the ice ages, permafrost blocked the caves with ice and frozen mud and made the limestone water resistant. When this melted during the summers, water was forced to flow on the surface and carved out the gorge. During warmer periods, the water flowed underground through the penetrable limestone, 
creating the caves and leaving the gorge dry, so that today much of the gorge has no river until the underground Cheddar Yo River emerges in the lower part from Goff's Cave. The north side of the gorge is owned and administered by the National Trust, whereas the cliffs on the south side of the gorge are owned by the Longleat Estate. Every year, each of the gorge's owners contribute funds towards the clearance of overgrowing vegetation and trees from the area. Wildlife in Cheddar Gorge includes dormice, yellow net mice, slowworms and adders, and the rare large blue butterfly and small pearl-bordered fritillary. A wide variety of wild birds can sometimes be seen, including peregrine falcons, buzzards, kestrels, ravens and the grasshopper warbler. If I recall correctly, the very first time I ever came to Cheddar would have been when I was at primary school. So that would have been in the early to mid 1970s. Now I remember that because we actually came here on a school trip. I can remember the school coach driving down Cheddar Gorge, and I do particularly remember stopping at Goff's Cave. That was the biggest of the caves in Cheddar. But what I do remember about Goff's Cave was being guided into one of the caverns by the guide and he turned the lights off as we were looking up into one of the caves and that frightened me as a kid. What it was, it was because they were showing some various lighting effects at the time that sort of enhanced the rock formations inside the cavern. But I just remember for a while looking up into that cavern and it just went dark for a while and I was really scared by that. The things that make an impression on you when you're a child. The Longleat Estate introduced wild goats to the area, which can be seen on both sides of the gorge. Unfortunately, I only just caught a brief glimpse of one goat in the bracken. That was a really lovely walk on this side of Cheddar Gorge. The path is now dropping steeply down to cross the road and then I'll climb up the other side and walk down the other side of the gorge. Descending to the road near the top end of Cheddar Gorge, I crossed to a path opposite which climbed steeply through the trees. Passing through a gate at the top, I came to a fork where the West Mendip Way led off to the left. My way, however, was to the right. The walk was now an easy rolling path above the south wall of Cheddar Gorge. Ahead, the views extended across Cheddar Reservoir and the Somerset Levels to the coast and Quantock Hills on the horizon. I enjoyed more superb views over the gorge, but I made very sure I didn't walk too close to the edge, for it was a long, long way down. The cliffs lining the gorge are so sheer that the road at the bottom is not visible.
Do you know this is actually the very first time I have ever walked around the top of Cheddar Gorge? It's amazing when I think about it. Years ago when I lived in this area, I came to Cheddar so many times, walking around the village and around the bottom of the gorge, so it's really amazing to think that today is the first time I've ever climbed to the top of it before. And by God, it's been worth it. The path gradually dropped down to a lookout tower, built by Roland Pavey in 1920. I decided to climb to the top of the tower, which provided a 360 degree view of the entire area. Well, I'm almost at the end of my walk, just got to go down here, which is Jacob's Ladder, which leads straight back into Cheddar. Jacob's Ladder, named after the biblical description of a ladder to the heavens, is a path of 274 steps built up the side of the gorge. I climbed down these steps until I eventually arrived back in Cheddar Village at the bottom of the gorge. No, I'm not going to say what I always say at the end of all of my walks. Oh yes I am, I'm lying. It's been a wonderful walk, another wonderful walk here in Cheddar. And in particular, I've really enjoyed for the first time walking around the top of Cheddar Gorge. Now I'm going to finish off today and enjoy one of Cheddar's local ice creams.